big difference, right? Really big difference. I'm so lucky. I just made it to the studio like five seconds before that bridge is going up for the ships, which can kill 20 minutes of your day. It's going up so slow, down again so slow, and the ships that go underneath are so slow. It's quite annoying, but still love it here in the harbor. Still love arriving here every Monday to make music the entire day upstairs in the new studio. I'm pumped, I'm hyped, busy day. See, the bridge is still not, not really up. Anyways, let's go upstairs and make something productive. First up, let's start with, with the giveaway. As you might remember, last week I got a new monitor controller. So this right here is a giveaway. I will give away all of my old gear. It won't be wasted. It won't lay around unused here in the studio. That's a sin. So I make sure one of you gets it. And the winner is Ronan Joe Lawrence. Congrats. This one right here is yours but today it's still mine and there's something I want to to test with it and try out. I got this Moco, I think it's like 60, 70 bucks. It's like a passive monitor controller, AB switch, mono, mute, AB source, left and right switch, which is all you need, but it's not considered the highest grade quality. Like it's good, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't come with the highest quality internals. And there's the thing, is it just voodoo and it doesn't do anything if you buy something really expensive? Or is there actually a difference in sound? One thing I can tell you already, when you turn this knob, depending on the volume, you can hear it like like crackling a little whenever you turn it. It's not too bad. I mean, you don't turn it constantly. You just change the volume and then back up again. But you can hear like the, the potty inside, like, like grinding a little and not having like a tight contact. And on the other side, we got the dangerous D bucks, which costs 2000 something. It's a monitor controller basically does the same thing. Volume knob, you can mono, you can select your input sources. It has more sources. It has a talkback mic built in, headphone out. The other one doesn't have a headphone out, which is like probably the biggest drawback of it. This one has summing built in, trims for the second and third pair of speakers. You can like have a sub attached to it. It has Bluetooth built in, like you can hit the button to mute, you can double hit it to go to your preferred volume setting again. It's really clever engineering, but is it worth so much more? And in its core, it does the same thing. It controls the volume, mute, some import sources and speaker sets. So I think the only way to really test it, because that's what's making it so hard to test these units, you have to test what, what goes out of the speakers actually. Luckily, this room is treated highly, so we'll be able to get good measurements. One measurement with a measurement microphone in the room and a second measurement using one of the speaker outputs and routed back directly into the computer so the room isn't a factor. Let's, let's see and hear what happens. very slight changes, if you can even call these changes. It could be just like, maybe for me walking, the mic moved a tiny, tiny bit and it already causes more trouble than those two devices compared to each other. So the first graph and the second, they almost look identical. If you overlay them, you can see there's like at 148 a difference and then in the like 200 to 300 range a lot of, but that's, that's not like big. We're talking here about maybe a dB. So uh, let's measure again and take out of the equation the speakers and the room to get hopefully more comparable measurements. But like in a room, and that's what I always say, if your room is shit, your room acoustic is shit, none of the gear matters. I 
I recorded first a pass through file where there was none attached, no monitor controller. The second is the Moco, the cheap one. And the third one is the dangerous one. I'll play them to you in a second. I already listened to it. There is a difference, but it's very, very slim. Like, yes, the dangerous sounds a little better than the Moco, but we're talking like a hint. You could never ever hear it unless you're directly comparing them against each other. There is like a smudge more kick, like a little more bottom end, it's more defined. The mids sit clearer where they should and there's a little more top, but really like a hint. I think especially when you focus on the kick you can you can hear a difference but again like probably through youtube there might be actually none no difference to you because it got converted and compressed and you're listening to it in a room that might be not treated so um yeah is it worth the price if, if it's for like sonically speaking probably no it's more like for the convenience factors and yeah for that last percent that only matters if everything else is is perfect if you have like one weak link in your chain squeezing out another percent out of one unit that costs like over two thousand more just doesn't make any sense and while we're at it let's let's continue because i also got like the one that was labeled original is like a pass through through the converters so i went out and in again i just skipped the monitor controllers as a reference now the big thing is is there a difference to the original original file that didn't go through anything <laughs> There, there, there is a difference, but it's like, who cares? Like, I have to focus so much and it's like so close, I can't even really describe the difference. Which is good. Like, your converters shouldn't introduce any kind of difference. So that's, that's a plus. Now, the last comparison for today, the most important and the most shocking maybe, Big difference, right? Really big difference. The original within the computer versus measuring here at the sweet spot. I put both in mono, I mean the mic is mono anyways, but also the file to make it fair. And that's basically what I'm hearing when I'm sitting here, minus of course the conversion and the mic. The mic is a measurement mic, but measurement mics just sound weird and awful but it gives you kind of an impression on how much the room actually colors what you're hearing. Out of all of the things in your studio, like I, I hate these discussions. I hate people asking me, should I like buy these and that kind of speakers? They're like twice as expensive. What will I get? I think the first tests show us not a whole lot. The difference between speakers, especially the woofer sizes, is huge, makes a big difference, but, or is at least like one of the bigger differences, but the biggest by far is your room. Always, 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 always. It alters what you can hear by a ton. If I had to, if someone would force me to give away any of my gear or the room or whatever, I would like happily trade everything I got against uh, the room acoustics it's so important i i would even have 
way smaller speakers. I would prefer having shitty converters, everything. Just please don't take away the room acoustics from me. It makes a huge difference. And what you hear, it sounds awful. I'd say it's like 50% better than what you hear because of the mic and everything. It's the biggest factor that changes what you hear. It's the biggest factor to your music. A lot of people always ask me, what's that one technique to get your mix right? What's the compressor I should use, the EQ, which kind of plugin? That's all bullshit. If you really want to improve your mixing, sound selection, music production skills, the first I would invest towards is fixing your room acoustics 100% on the technical side. Then there's, of course, the learning part and the educating part, the experience part that goes first then room acoustics, then speakers, then your converters, then maybe the monitor controller, and then the outboard gear if, if needed. I hope this example made clear what's happening in the audio industry world. You pay a lot for the very last percent that is in that voodoo region where you don't really know if it's even necessary or if anyone can tell or hear. So I would advise any, any beginner to spend the money towards education, I don't know, sample packs, maybe a plug-in here or there that you have like basics there. A good computer is important, especially if beginners ask me if they should like put 500 euros towards new speakers. I'm always thinking like take the 500 and invest it towards you as a brand. Get a website, get a logo, have a name, make some advertisement for yourself, build up a fan base. That's way, way more important than having more gear. And if I'm saying that, I don't know if it, it counts that much because I, I love gear. I have a ton. There is a difference, but it's a slim and slight one. Anyways, enough talking, enough testing. I hope the point came across. Next up, music making for the entire day. Great, very great successful session. I've like finished up like two songs, like the final mixing, mastering kind of touches. So they're now ready and, and ready scheduled for release. I will let you know once I have the exact release date for these. And I got a new top line by Salvo. You might remember her from my song or our song Secrets. She sent me another vocal. It's not perfect yet, but very promising. So there will be a lot of back and forth, some phone calls. And once the, the contract stuff is done, I'll share it with you. Right now, I just can't for legal reasons. So Secrets will actually get a follow-up, which I'm really looking forward to. If you forgot what Secrets sounds like, I'll play it to you in the outro. Don't forget to think about the priorities in your studio and music making journey. Trust me, room acoustics is like the one thing you need to fix or think about. Just try it out in your studio. If you have a mic, just put it where you listen to music and play the sound of the speakers and then play it from your computer, listen again to it, you will be shocked. But keep in mind, it's like twice as bad because you're listening at the same spot what you recorded. So maybe mix it half with like the original within the computer and that will kind of give you a rough estimate on how much the room is coloring your sound. The first time I did it, I was like, what the fuck? It's so crazy in my old studio that it kind of seemed pointless that I was thinking about, should I push this frequency by two or three dB? It just doesn't make any sense if you can't hear it. So try it out. We'll see us tomorrow back again here in the studio, hopefully with that new Salvo song. I, I can already tell you it's called Bad Dreams. Very, very cool, moody track. Enjoy Secrets for now. Secrets, my secrets, too dangerous to give.